there's also a cap on the monarch points. You can't ever have more than 999 points stored in any one area. Uh, very little chance that you'd ever want to be sitting on that many points without doing it anyway. There's always a technology level that you can be upgrading. Ooh, and I got a new ruler. Like I said, it took a little longer than I was thinking it was going to, but they finally assigned me a new guy, and he's pretty much terrible. He's 202. That's, that's not good at all. Fortunately, because I'm a Republic, I will have the option of electing who I want to. Uh, Republican candidates are always the same. You'll have a bureaucratic candidate, a uh, diplomatic candidate, and a military candidate, and their statistics will be 4, 1, and 1. Always. They'll, they'll have 4 in whatever their preferred thing is, and then 1 and 1 in the others. So it's it's pretty cool being a Republic in that you never really, aside from the very beginning there, get shafted with a completely moronic and inept ruler. And every few years you can change what you want to have going up the fastest. So if I really want to get my administrative tech level up like I do right now, I'm probably going to be selecting a bureaucratic candidate so that I'll be getting a four additional points. But if a couple of years down the road I find that my military lack is lacking, I'll probably hire a military candidate to try and get that caught up. <clears throat> or if I find myself in a position where I'm like low on diplomatic points because I've been having to use them to like peace agreements, I might hire a diplomatic candidate. Or if I have an ID grouping in that, I would do the same. Uh, you don't get that luxury with monarchies. They uh, tend to rule until they die, and then they get replaced by some random schmo in the succession. Uh, military leaders. Let's see, do we miss anything in religion? Defender of the Faith still operates like it did in EU3. Influence. Uh, reform Desire. They changed how Protestantism works, how the Reformation works, you now have like a visible number to work with, and various decisions made by all the countries will affect this. You'll get events occasionally where you'll have a couple of options that you can make, and depending on what you choose, some of them will increase the reform desire percentage, and once that starts getting high enough, you'll start seeing provinces just kind of randomly switching to either Protestant or Reformed and things like that. And so if, if you're really trying to hammer home the Catholicism, you're going to want to try and do things that will keep that number down. And then, of course, religious unity is if you are Catholic and you have a province go Protestant, that's going to damage your religious unity, which is going to affect your papal influence and other things like that. That's where missionaries come in. Missionaries still do the same thing that they did before. Uh, your tolerances are still there, just like they were in 3. The military, uh, this still operates on your technology level. You'll be able to upgrade units based on your tech level. Nothing too revolutionary there. Hiring generals is a little bit different, or all leaders really, admirals, conquistadors, all that fun stuff. Their statistics are kind of based on your army tradition. I've noticed it still seems fairly random. I had pretty low, tr you know, I, I could hit this right now at 15 tradition, and okay, that guy's pretty good. He's got a 0, 2, 2, and 1. That's pretty good, but I've hit it before when I first started at like 16 tradition, and I've gotten a guy that's only had one point, and the rest have been goose eggs, so I'm not quite sure how that's tied into army tradition. It seems a little arbitrary still. But they show you your, uh, you know, your force limit, and your naval tradition, your military tactic level, which is based on your military technology level, discipline, defensiveness, all those fun things. 
Uh, ooh, Republican tradition. We haven't touched on that yet. Uh, republics get this fun little Republican tradition statistic. Uh, it starts out at 100 for me. And you can see it goes up by 1% every year, as long as we are a republic. This will go down if you attempt to re-elect the same candidate for another term. It is possible to do that. You know, I said that you get the choice of three candidates, but the guy who was previously in office can be reelected, and you can get an FDR situation where he's around for three or four terms. But every time that you reelect a candidate, it drops your Republican tradition by ten. Now that's going to be recovering by one percent every year. So depending upon how far apart your terms are, you can expect that to be recovered anywhere from four points to eight points before your next term. So if, if you're on, I think it's a, I think noble republics have the longest terms. I think they're at eight. So if I'm a noble republic and I keep re-electing the same guy, I'm really only going to go down two republican tradition points at a time. But, like, in my current situation as an administrative republic, I think I elect every five years. And so I'll only be recovering five. And as that gets lower, your national revolt risk goes up. People start thinking that, well, oh, this is kind of looking like a monarchy, and so they'll want to get rid of the republic altogether because they're basically in a monarchy anyway so they'll want to change your government type to a monarchy since that's what they're essentially living with anyhow but they don't like that veneer on top of it uh, so if that gets low enough you'll wind up risking revolutions and if those revolutionaries succeed they will force change your government type from a republic to a despotic monarchy Old manpower. Uh, map's still there. Holy Roman Empire view is still here. Uh, the electors are still present. The Reich's reforms. Not everybody votes on the Reich's reforms like they used to. Like, uh, Switzerland is not an elector. I don't get to vote on that when the emperor decides to enact a reform. That just happens. And Austria starts as the Emperor. The games that I've played so far, no one has managed to take it away from Austria. Austria's first act usually is to attack Bohemia to revoke their electorate status. And that pretty much makes Austria the only game in town. Let's see, is there anything that I haven't touched on? Time operates the same. Uh, diplomatic options. Ah, yes. Covert actions are no longer based on spies. They've done away with spies. All of your covert actions are done by diplomats now. Which makes sense, as I think in the real world, most of your espionage is done by diplomats. And here again, we don't have an idea to do to so discontent. You have to take the espionage idea group and then unlock for so discontent, sabotage, reputation, infiltrate administration. Uh, anybody can fabricate a claim or support rebels. That's something that you can just do. Dynastic actions, they still have royal marriages, they still have personal unions. It's still possible to inherit an entire country through a personal union. Not easy to do, but it can be done. And I, mean, I think that pretty well covers most of the major changes that they've made between EU3 and EU4. At least anything that I can think of right now. If I come up with something later, maybe I'll do another video. And who knows, if we feel like it, we might even do some actual gameplay on this 
trying to do the whole neutrality thing with Switzerland. If we get some demand, well, I guess we'll see what happens. But for now, I've been the Baron, and thanks for joining us for a little Europa 4.